Welcome to my show. My name is Marcel Johnson, and this is A Freedom Experience. <laughs> yeah, so listen, man, we just had Rashad on the show. He was killing it, you know what I'm saying, behind the scenes. But welcome back to the Freedom Experience. My name is Marcel Johnson. I'm so excited today, man, because I love whenever, you know what I'm saying, I get the youth on the show and they give us their perspective on life. But I ask that you would like, comment, subscribe, and make sure you hit the share button so your family and your peoples could join us, you know what I'm saying, join along for the ride. But listen, man, we got Rashad Chapman. We got mm -hmm. student, we got athlete, we got child of God. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to get into these questions. <laughs> we're going to get into it, bro. So, first of all, how you feel? You cool? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. It's a, it's a good day. It's a good day. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. We got to uh, turn this off, though. We got to turn this fan off. Okay, so I know sometimes the audio with the fan, but, you know, we always be having a fan blog. But I wanted to uh, ask you, bro, was you nervous to, like, come on the show? Yeah, I was a little nervous. Like when I first found out about, I was like, I was like, he's a cool dude. I'm gonna come over here and do it. But when I actually started sitting down, I started getting a little nervous and stuff. But yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. be saying like everybody be acting G. You know what I'm saying when they get the invite, but then when they get the chance to sit yeah. down, they be acting like, man, I ain't know it was gonna be this bright. What do you think about the set? No, I, I mess with it. I mess with it. This this nice. I yeah, like it. I like you mess it. with it. Yeah. yeah. Usually people don't be done. Like when they get here, it's a whole setup. It's a whole situation with lights everywhere. It's, it's hard, but. Uh, I'm excited to have you, bro, and I'm proud of you. I appreciate because it. Because you push past your fears, you know what I'm saying, to be sitting in a position to tell your story. So, first of all, bro, I wanted to talk about how we're in Pittsburgh right now for any of the viewers, but you lived in Pittsburgh, but then you traveled and you went to North Carolina, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You lived there for how long again? Two years. Two, Two years. years, bro. So, what was that like? I always like to ask people who lived out of town to see if they had the same experiences as me. What was it like living out of town for you? I mean, it was just it was just different. Like in Pittsburgh, I'm more like used to being inner city, yeah. being surrounded by like other black kids and yep. stuff. But North Carolina, that's in the South. Uh, I moved to an area called Clayton. Okay. So it was like it was like kind of white. Like it had black people in it, but yeah. my school was like mostly just a whole bunch of white kids. So it was just wow. it was just a different type of experience. There was a lot more like racist people. Mm. Then, then like I'm used to, cause at my school right now it's all black, so you really got to worry about that. Yeah. But there it was just a little bit different, you know. Just That's everything. crazy, bro. But what's crazy is that you go to a academy school right now, mm -hmm. and I love to say Pittsburgh has an incredible school. It's called <clears throat> Neighborhood Academy, and they have predominantly black students. They do have some white students, but it is predominantly black, and it's an academy school with high honor roll students. Everybody makes great grades. Yeah. And coming from North Carolina and then being, you know, brought into a school where you have to make good grades, it's an academy school, was that transition tough? Well, originally I did go to Neighborhood Academy. So I, when they started the middle school up, yeah. seventh grade, I went there for two years. Mm -hmm. And then I, I left during ninth grade year. But I, I did online 10th grade because I was like COVID, so everything yeah. was crazy. Yep. My mom already knew we were moving back, so she just said, you can do online for this because wow. it's a better school than the public school I was in in North Carolina. So, so I, man, I yeah. want to tap into that public school, bro. bro. You said that there was a lot of racist people in there. So what did they? What are some of the things they did to you that was racist? Uh, so like, I personally didn't experience like someone coming up to me calling me the N-word or nothing like that. Yeah. But like I heard about like there was this big thing with like a group chat. Of yeah. kids that were basically talking about coming to school and killing all the black kids. Wow. When I heard about it, I was like, that's crazy. Like, I wow. ain't never heard nothing like that before. And, like, I, the students didn't really even get, like, punished for it for real. And I've seen, like, people there get punished for even less. So it's like, wow. that was just that was just different. And so, was, it's yeah. crazy that you say that because we hear that and we overlook that and we think stuff like that is regular. But that's a lot of what them school shootings be happening. Like, there really be kids taking rifles and guns into the school and killing kids, whether they're all black, whatever. So whenever you hear something like, we're going to shoot and kill all the black kids in school, did that really bring fear to you? Did it make you want to not go to school? What did that do to you? No, nah, it was just like more so like, like I never, I never like, that was just crazy. Like, yeah, I, I've never really been like, I didn't really get scared because of it or nothing, but yeah. it was just like, that's weird. 
So yeah. it just made me like a little bit like stand off from certain kids to like yeah. just seem like they moving weird. But for me, I still gonna do me regardless. So. Yeah. yeah, and you know what's crazy, y'all? I always tell people whenever you start putting your kids and your you know your black or something, and you start putting your kids into these white schools. It is better with education, but a lot of times they have to deal with the other problem, which is feeling uh, excluded, which is feeling talked about, you know what I'm saying, picked on. The racist aspect of t putting your kids in different schools, that's important too. So how many siblings do you have? Uh, so I have, my mom has 10 altogether. Your I've mom not, got 10 kids? Yeah. I hey, got... man, God bless your mom. <laughs> but shout out to your mom. She's a G for that, bro. Yeah. 10 kids? Okay. Yeah, for real. For real, for real. So, yeah. That's wild. There's nine of us. Well, in the house right now, yeah. there's uh, eight. I'm the oldest. There's eight of y'all in the crib right now? Yeah, because the two oldest, they've, they've like, grown up. They moved out. They've okay. on other stuff. But I'm, I'm next to leave. Wow, bro. So, she got mm -hmm. ten. So, what are you, um, one to ten? Where are you at? I'm eight. So, I was, I'm, oh, the, I'm the third oldest. I'm the third oldest. So, you have seven up under you? Mm hmm So, because when I met you, I knew that you were an influencer. Because I see the way that people respect you, and I see the impact that you make in your school around, and it's like a quiet impact, you know what I'm saying? It's not even like no hype stuff. It's like a quiet respect that everybody just knows who Shaw is, and they respect it. But I think, like, what type of role in leadership do you see yourself playing with your siblings? I mean, I've, like, I have siblings that are, like, really, like, like, really, there's a big gay age gap for some of us. Yeah. It's so, like, my mom has twins that are two. Okay. And I'm 17, so that's a 15 year age gap. Wow, bro. So I feel like my relationship with them is gonna be more like an uncle type thing. Cause when <laughs> when they're th when they're 15, I'm gonna be 30. So yeah. like, I feel like I just try to help them out. Like, I, if my if my siblings need something, I'll take them to the store to, yeah. to get what they need. Uh, I'll, I'll buy them stuff if they need something. You know, I just try to help them whatever way I can. Stuff. Do you like try to teach them lessons about stuff? Like, do you try to teach them responsibility or like, you know, what I'm saying stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Well, one big thing I, I try to teach them is okay. Like in the house, they just think they could just hit anyone and people won't hit them back. They okay. can talk any other way. Like that's just not how the world works. You're not yeah. gonna just go around hitting people and they not gonna hit y'all back. So you teach them consequences. Yeah, I teach them like there's consequences for stuff you do. You just can't do certain stuff. Like you gotta you gotta know when certain things are acceptable and when certain things aren't. Yeah. Do you feel seen? Because I always thought about like I had a, I grew up with siblings, but I didn't have didn't have yeah. ten. So whenever you are in a large group like that, do you feel seen or do you feel kind of like overlooked with your parents because there's so many other kids? Nah, I feel like I feel like when we do things, it, yeah. it's really like like a together thing. Like we might not get along the best or nothing, but <laughs> yeah. like everyone talks so much that everybody <laughs> she has to respond to everybody. So I feel like. When we're, when we're together, it's like, I never feel like excluded or like, yeah. I don't talk to her as much. We all get time to talk to my mom and stuff, so. So you still get the yeah. love? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about your dad? Is your dad in the picture? No, nah, I don't really, I don't really talk to my dad much. Okay. Why uh, do you think that is? Uh, I don't know. He really, he didn't really do much for us when we were growing up and stuff. Okay. And then I feel like he favors me more because I'm a boy than he does my wow. siblings. How and many boys and girls your mom got? So... There's five and five, but with my dad, it's, I'm the only boy, and there's four girls. Okay. And, with the, and with my other siblings' dad, there's four boys and one girl. So she has two, you, there's two dads and ten kids, yeah. and with your five, you're the only boy out of the rest of them. Yeah. And he favors you over them. That's, that's what it would be seeming like to me. Like, yeah. like, he would call me and be like, would you, do you want to come over? But he wouldn't ask my sisters and stuff. Wow, so and you I don't mess like, with that. No, nah, like, I'm the oldest, so I don't really want them to think, like, you know, so, like, yeah, I feel that. That's yeah. real G of you, too, for you to just be like, you know what? If you're not going to accept all of us, then I'm not really going. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But where's your relationship with him today? I don't I don't really talk to him. I haven't talked to him in a few years, like two years maybe. Wow, so how does that make you feel? It, it doesn't really bother me. Yeah. I, I have my granddad. He's like my father figure in my life. Okay. So that's, that's who I look to is like a father figure. Yeah, your granddad. Oh, it's crazy. A lot of times we don't realize that not having a dad around doesn't affect us right away. Like you're a teenager, but then when you get in like your early 20s and you start getting older and stuff, you start seeing how like not having a dad around will affect you. Mm -hmm. So I would just say like, you know, I think that you do have to forgive your dad. And then I think maybe, have you ever told him how you feel about that with your siblings? Nah. Yeah, I think that you got to talk to him eventually and at least let him know, you know what I'm saying, how that affected you and then like your perspective on it. Because I always think that it's good to reconcile with your parents. Even mm -hmm. if they did you dirty, even if your parents did something that was shady, it's still good to just honor them in a way 
to try to have a relationship. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's on your time. No pressure. Yeah. But I do think you should try to reach out and talk to him. Yeah. I mean, uh, eventually one day I will. Like, yeah. his other his other children, mm -hmm. eventually I want to, like, connect with them. But yeah. I just, this is not right now. Not right now. Not I right mean, now. it's okay. Sometimes you do need space and time. It's on your time. You pray about it. It's like, I'll lead the way. Mm -hmm. But, all right. So, bro, you're an athlete. Mm -hmm. So, like, I be coming to all your football games. Shout out Nazim, you know what I'm saying? Because I be coming to all his games, all the basketball mm -hmm. games, all the football games. Shout out Nathan, you know what I'm saying? And I be at all y'all games, and you're a beast on the field, bro. So, you just play football or you play basketball, too? Nah, so last year I played basketball. Okay. But this year I just decided to, like, switch it up and go back to wrestling, which oh, I did okay. when I was in middle school. So, okay. that's what I'm doing right now. Well, I'm doing wrestling and indoor track right now. Okay. And then... I did football, and then after wrestling and indoor track season, I'm doing outdoor track. Wow. Were you always an athlete, or was that something that came later on in life? No, nah, I've, I've done sports my whole life. My mom puts <laughs> us in, puts all of us in as many sports as, as like she can. She'd be like, get out. Yeah. Like, y'all got to go do something. Go to after school. Yeah. Go play. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I know, everybody, right, mom? Everybody does like... a whole bunch of sports. Yeah. Everyone in my family. That's so, yeah. good, though, because she keeps y'all proactive. Yeah. Do you feel like being an athlete helps you become a better student? Yeah, it helps me like focus. Like, there's a lot of lessons I've learned from football and different sports. Mm. Like, it just, I, it just keeps me like concentrated. Like, I feel like if I was only focused on school, yeah. I wouldn't feel, I wouldn't feel like fulfilled enough. So wow. I feel like sports give me like an outlet to do different stuff. Yeah, you know, stuff like I that. I see that because you know, whenever you're just going to school, and sports ain't for everybody, but when you're just going to school. And you come home, you have all this open open opportunity to do bad stuff. Yeah. But the fact that you have something to do, it keeps you productive. It keeps you on point. Yeah. So, uh, what's your favorite basketball, football? Football, football, football. football? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. Course. What's your number again? Uh, I wore yeah. seventy eight. Yeah, seventy eight. I knew it was an eight in there. Seventy eight. Yeah, seventy eight. Okay, so you're a senior. You're going to college. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like you want to go to college for? Uh, I plan on, uh, be. I want to be a lawyer when I'm older, wow. and also like. Politics, but that's like after the Warriors stuff. Yeah, I feel like let's politics go. will be when I'm around like 40, maybe a little okay. older. Even but... a little bit younger. <laughs> we gonna need you, yeah, bro. You get into that lawyer life, but why do you want to become a lawyer? Uh, so well, it's all started like a, like I'm be real. It started like with like Criminal Minds, Law and Order. I, I just okay. really like the show. <laughs> okay. But like, but like, I love that. But as I got older, I started thinking about it more because yeah. like this is my life. So I. I just want to like help people in like neighborhoods that like don't might that they maybe don't have money to pay for like defense. So I want to be a criminal wow. defense attorney, and I want to help them like better the situation because I don't think people wow. should be in prison for stuff like that they didn't do. Wow, bro! That's so I, I'm gonna like, help people that can't afford good attorneys. That's a big calling on your life, bro. Because I think that. You are called, the Bible talks about taking up for people who can't take up for themselves and being the voice of the people who don't have the voice, the voiceless. And I think that you're doing that. And for that to be like something that you're pursuing to actually go to school, because eight years college ain't just, lawyer ain't just nothing. <laughs> yeah. Like you got to really spend. So for you to be dedicated enough to really want to go to school and your purpose is about helping other people who can't afford to be, you know what I'm saying, represented, mm -hmm. that's that's major, bro. Appreciate like, that's, it. Appreciate that's a blessing and that's solid. I'm proud of you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. for sure. <laughs> and then, uh, okay, so I want to play a game with you. you all ready? Right. It's going to be a uh, rapid question. Rapid questions, all right. Rapid questions. You ready? Fire. I'm ready. I'm ready. You ready? All right, so ready. who's your favorite artist? Lil Baby. Lil ba okay, why? I don't know. He just, he's been dropping a lot of a lot of good stuff. Like, it's hard to pick a favorite, but like, uh -huh. if I'm going to pick a rapper, it's Lil Baby. Okay, what about a female rapper? Glorilla. You like her better than uh, Megan Thee Stallion? She, she rap about different stuff than yeah. a lot of a lot of the girl, the women rappers I see. Yeah, facts. Yeah. Okay, so what's one of your favorite songs by The Baby? Um, The Baby. Let me think. I like uh, Going Baby. Going Baby is fire. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. What about? So hold up. Do you like Lil Baby over The Baby, or you like? Yeah, I mean, Lil Baby's better. For real, so why you say the baby's your favorite artist then? I said Lil Baby. Did I say the baby? <laughs> I think you said Lil Baby. Did he who you say Lil Baby? Oh, yeah, Lil all right. Baby. So I was picturing no baby. So you said Lil Baby. Yeah, Lil Baby. Lil okay, baby. yeah. A lot of people say that too. Yeah. Whenever I compare them to everybody say Lil Baby over the baby. That's yeah. funny. Okay, so next question. Um favorite song? By Lil, by Lil Baby. Uh right now it's probably right on. Right on. Right on. Yeah, right How on. come? I don't know. It's just it's just the vibe of the song. It's just it's just real upbeat. 
Yeah. I just I just like it. It's just nice. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh cheeseburger or pizza? Pizza. I don't I don't eat burgers. For real? Yeah, I'm like real picky. I don't like burgers. You don't like burgers? What like are you pescatarian or you like you don't nah. eat red meat or something? I don't eat pork, but Okay. It's just burgers. I just don't like them. They don't. They don't taste good to me. Yeah. So yeah. pizza. All, what about pepperoni on it? Of course not. Yeah, no pepperoni. I just. I just begin cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mess with cheese, and then I do cheese and onions. Put yeah. mushrooms on it too. I'm not the, the buffalo chicken. I, I like that. Okay. Buffalo like chicken. Buffalo chicken. Yeah. Okay. Next question. What's your biggest mistake? Biggest mistake. That's that's a difficult one. Uh, let me think. I don't know. It's just like I don't really have like the mistakes that I do make. I don't really like regret them but I do uh one mistake I would say was like big was uh I don't know not doing I don't know I'm trying to think Go ahead, not doing what maybe like not like staying with uh with certain sports as much as when I was younger because like yeah. I feel like the reason I can't take a lot of sports really too seriously now is because I waited too long. Like I, I, those periods where I would stop, I wasn't really de- dedicated. Yeah, I should have dedicated myself more to certain stuff. Oh, that's a good one. Like not being as consistent or as dedicated as you could have been. Yeah, that's a good one even for adults. Okay, uh, introvert or extrovert? Extrovert. How come? I I just like I just like meeting new people, talking to people, like learning like what makes them who they are. Mm-hmm. And it's just when I go to places, I try to like talk to everybody. I don't like to make people feel excluded or nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right. Favorite thing about yourself? Like, physical or like me? Just me in general? Uh, Let's do favorite attribute of yourself. What, right. what it, like, if, you, if you're not being conceited, what's your favorite thing about yourself? I like my hair. You like your hair? Okay, <laughs> yeah, I like, okay, I like okay. my hair. Yeah, I feel like my hair too. It be doing yeah. what it want to do though. Yeah, some, a lot like, of times. Like, a lot of times, bro. Yeah. Yes. Okay, What is what is something like introspective that you like about yourself? I don't know. I, I feel like I'm a very, I'm a very like caring person. Yeah. So like, I, even like sometimes someone will ask me for something, I'll say no, but then I'll feel bad that I said no. So I go back and like, all right, here you go. <laughs> oh, so you're I, one I, of them? Yeah, I be feel bad. Like I don't, I don't like telling people no a lot of the time. So I yeah. just, I just be trying to, I, I just be like considerate other people's feelings. I don't like to hurt people's feelings. That's what's up. That's love, bro. And I think that that's the number one thing that I feel like your generation, might, like our generation period really needs. Mm-hmm. And the fact that that's one of your favorite attributes, that's big. And that's good that you can see that in yourself because then that means you can see it in other people. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to ask you how important are good friends, like friendship? I think they're they're very uh, important because the people you surround yourself with yeah. are like, they like rub off on you. Yep. So like if you're around people that are like bad influences, yep. you start taking into them bad influences. So I think friends give you like an outlet to like express your feelings, yeah. help you grow as a person, have people to do things with because you can't just do everything by yourself. Mm. I mean like some people think they can, but everybody needs somebody. So come on, I just bro. think I just think friends are yeah. everybody needs somebody. You're yeah. so bro, and like you said, uh, whenever you're around somebody for too long, whether it's good or bad, it rubs off on you. Mm-hmm. So you really have to be intentional with who you hang around. Mm-hmm. So last time you cried, uh, I I know exactly. It was when it was our playoff game, our last playoff game. Yeah, that that was the last. That was the first time I cried in about four years. For real? Yeah, I've you never, was that tore up about it. Yeah, it was like it was just like at first I was like I'm not gonna cry. Yeah, but we was walking through the handshake. We turned around, mm-hmm. walking to the the little the little talk after the game. Yeah, I was like it's really over. It's my mm. last game. You starting to tear up now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just. It That's was crazy, bro. That's what's up. It just shows dedication and true passion. Yeah. Um, it's crazy to me that you want to go to college and not play sports, bro. Yeah, it's it's just like the com. I'm I, I like sports, but yeah. I don't think I'm ready for the commitment of that. And also with school, because mm-hmm. school is stressful enough. Mm-hmm. But like waking up at six to go do sports, then more practices. Yeah. You have to learn the playbook. You have to. Stay on top of like it's just, just too much. it's just too much for me. How do you deal with anxiety and stress with school and with peer pressure with everything? How do you deal with that? Uh, I mean, I feel like a lot of time. I mean, when it comes to like peer pressure, I don't mm. really think I allow people to make me do things that I'm not comfortable doing. I like because I feel like I'm, my mom has always taught me to like don't listen to what other people tell you. You gotta you gotta be a leader. Don't be a follower. So Come on. so I I feel like I don't really get peer pressure much, but. I do be getting stressed from school. Like we be we be there a long time. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. we get a lot of work. And I procrastinate a lot, so I be having like those times where I had an entire essay due the next morning, and I was busting out one night, bruh. But but like, I don't know. It's just 
I just try to like calm down. Yeah. And you know, try to think hard so I could just get it done fast, and do what I gotta do. Listen, man, I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but God really has his hand on Rashad. Like the fact that he has the type of mass that he has, the fact that he makes the type of decisions that he makes, you can really just tell that God is doing something special in your life. And I feel like did you always know that God was on your life or did you kinda like not even know it? Just oblivious. No, nah, I feel like I've always believed in God. Like yeah. I've never there's never been a time where I felt like Oh, there's no God or nothing. Yeah. I've never like questioned there being a God. Like even when like people would die or something like that, like I would just be like, That's God's plan. Like it yeah. was just supposed to happen. So I've never really like questioned God or nothing like that. But yeah, I always knew it was like God was with me and stuff. You always could feel like just his presence like with you, surrounding you. Yeah. yeah. So if there was somebody who was like your age who was like, I don't believe in God, I don't get into none of that, you know what I'm saying? I just think everything just happens. What is something you would tell them to inspire them to be like, Listen, God is real? I mean, there's this, there's certain people I know that don't yeah. believe in God or they're just not sure what they believe in yeah. general. Like, they feel like there's something, but they're not sure if it's, like, a God. Like, they, right. they just believe in something. I just tell them, like, well, I don't necessarily, like, tell them because, like, I feel like when it comes to people's beliefs, that's, like, a, a yeah. tricky area. You, know, you, you I really can't like, force it. Yeah, I don't really want to make anybody, like, uncomfortable with certain yeah, stuff. No. But, um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> just, it's just I feel like everything here had to have came from somewhere. Mm. And I feel like... We're we're such like complex beings that like yes. a complex being had to have created created us and stuff. I'm I'm not really like I don't really know everything about religion no. or nothing, but mm -mm. I do believe in God and you know I think other shit too. What you bro? What you just said was so like profound because it's not that I'm gonna push God onto you, but if you just open up your eyes, you can see like a complex person had to create us because we're complex beings. Like, there's so many different elements and so many things that make us up. Somebody had to be very intentional with creating us. The fact that we all just have a different fingerprint. Finger. Yeah. Like, come on now. Like, so many people, billions, and nobody has the same fingerprint. That just goes to show you somebody was that intentional with you. So I like that that's where you <clears throat> direct them to when you're trying to, like, prove to them or trying to showcase to them that God is real. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's like using science. So what's your favorite subject in school? History, history. Why is that? I just like knowing how how things came to be. Like when I think when I learn about certain things that happen, yeah, it's just like, dang, I just can't like imagine that in this day and age. Yeah, like, I I don't know. Like in specific, I'm like really interested in like the, like, the times when it was just like war, like kings, like medieval stuff. I don't know why. Yeah. It's just that type of stuff <laughs> is just interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. So. Cause History. it's just like like Game of Thrones type of thing. Yeah, I watched Game of Thrones. I like that show. Yeah. So yeah, it's just stuff like that is see? just I find interesting. Okay, I like see, bro. Like you're an educator, bro. Like you're you're an educator. You're a scholar. You study. You figure things out, and you don't just allow for other people's uh, perception or information to just be indoctrinated in you. You really do your own studies, and I appreciate that about you. It makes you just a leader. It makes you influential. It makes you impactful, bro. You got to keep that up. Um, I also wanted to ask you, bro, about relationships. Like, being a teenager, having girlfriends, boyfriends, everybody's, like, lesbian, gay, straight, <laughs> yeah. bad, you know, it's, I'm, yeah. you're him, her, they, those. There's so many different things nowadays that you can be. How do you navigate relationships as far as, like, you know what I'm saying, dating, your dating life? All right, so, I'm going to be honest. My mom, she tells me, like, focus on school, so she's not really into me, like, dating girls and stuff like that but <laughs> like on, i'm just i'm 17 i'm a senior yeah. like it's it's natural it's gonna happen period but like i try not to i don't i don't go out looking for things like i just let what happened happen so I, if yeah. i start talking to someone it's just like if we vibe if i start liking you like like yeah. what happens happens yeah i don't like i don't i don't like to force anything so so are you in a place where you're dating people or you're like staying away from relationships no nah, i i am yeah so you're in a relationship right now no nah, I'm, I'm single but like okay i'll, but I'll talk to people yeah. okay you talk to people all right so do you feel like people are just like having sex actively like i know you don't really know about the generation before you but do you feel like people are more so just like on social media and talking about it or you feel like they're really out getting nah, popping pe people's actually are getting popping you're getting popping they're, they're, they're getting it popping for real yeah it's just like i feel like nowadays like, i feel like something is new with this generation okay. also like with that comes with like the he she they them stuff like that with yep. identity stuff it's yep. about like accepting everything. So like mm -hmm. people, I feel like nowadays people have like less respect for certain aspects of themselves, and mm -hmm. I feel like they just they don't really see the value in it. 
and mm. certain stuff like that. Like I think I feel like sex is more than just like you just do it to have fun and stuff like that. Yep. So I, I don't know. People just I don't wow. know. They just not. It's not like that anymore. Wow. Cause it's like sex is really like so deep because you get into supernatural soul ties with people and you're literally giving a page and a piece of yourself to that person that you could really never get back unless you do something to like really in a spiritual room to get it back. And I think that whenever you keep having sex with so many different people, you're giving yourself away. And then people wonder why they feel like they're they're going crazy or losing themselves. But <clears throat> I like how you stay away from that whole realm when you navigate, you know what I'm saying, to stay in a place of peace by not giving yourself away in that way. I think that that's real, like, G of you, and I think it's very intelligent of you, you know what I mean? But it still can be tough because you deal with lust, you deal with temptation, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Girls be out here just trying to do whatever, but, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But um, what about your friends? Like, do any of your friends have kids yet? No, nah, none, none of my friends have, like, kids or nothing like that. For real? Yeah, nah. Because one yeah. of, like, Nazim's friends, I forgot his name, but he had a baby recently. I wasn't trying to put him on blast, but I put <laughs> him on blast. He basically had a baby, and I was just like, man. And no disrespect, because a lot of people be uh, teenage parents, and then they can raise their kids, and their kids be phenomenal. So I feel like everybody has a different path in life, but when you know better, you do better. Yeah, I feel like, I don't know. For me, I feel like I'm going to wait for kids until after, like, Regular college and after law school, I don't. Yeah. I, I want my kids to have a lot, so I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to have them when I'm like broke and then they can't have nothing. Come so. on, listen, bro. That's yeah. wisdom. Yeah, that's wisdom. So, do you want to get married when you get older? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, eventually. Eventually. So okay, eventually you want to get married. So I wanted to ask you, what would you tell something? Who would you tell? Because how old are you? Seventeen. 18? Seventeen. You're seventeen. Seventeen. What would you tell ten year old Rashad? I would just, I would just like tell myself that, I don't know, we end up doing a lot. Like when I was 10, I just, I just was like carefree. I would go outside, ride my bike, go <laughs> yeah, with my friends. No cares. Yeah. Like, I mean, like things get tougher, you know, mm. you go through more stuff, but like, I don't know, we stay cool. So just keep pushing and stuff. Just keep pushing. Yeah, just keep going. Okay. What are some aspirations and some things that you want to accomplish besides law school, besides you know, college, what is something else that you wish to accomplish in your life? I eventually want to be a politician. Okay. I'm not exactly sure where. It depends on how my money is. I, I might one day run for president, but... Okay, come on, I, president. I, I definitely... From the I, freedom I, experience, <laughs> let's go. Yeah, but I definitely do want to do some form of politics, maybe okay. like a mayor, uh, um, a senator. I can see A it. person in the House of Representatives, just anything. I just want to be a part of like the, the making the bills that, you know, change people's lives and stuff. Listen, man, make sure y'all remember this face. Make sure y'all remember this interview. I just want to speak life over you. I just want to come into agreement with all of your desires, with all of God's plans in heaven. And I just want to ask God right now to cause them to manifest on the earth. And I just ask God to give you a supernatural focus, a supernatural grace, a supernatural um, ease and endurance and tenacity to continue to run that race and continue to face every opposition and every circumstance that tries to stop you and cause you to bulldoze and push it over until you reach the destination that God has for you. Appreciate it. That's a prayer. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. We stand in agreement with that. <laughs> yeah. I want to see it, bro. And I believe that, man, you got what it takes, bro. I see, like, all your efforts. I see all your endeavors. I see the way that you move. And, man, I really felt like it was important to bring you on a show to highlight who you are now because I know it only gets graded later. But I love to close the show out with words of wisdom. So I wanted to ask you, bro, what is some of your words of wisdom that you would leave, you know what I'm saying, that people have to carry it with? Uh, so my words of wisdom for me personally is yeah. that um, you got to think about your motivations for doing certain things. You got to make sure that everything you do, you're doing it for, for certain motivations. Because if you're not motivated, you're never going to get things done. So just just make sure you're motivated, stay motivated. If you're not motivated, find things that, that will keep you motivated so that you know you reach your, your goals. That's okay. about it. That's about it. I received that. I received I heard it. So you gotta stay motivated and you gotta keep yourself, you know what I'm saying, um activated. Like you can't settle in what it is you're going through. You gotta keep yourself up motivated, get around people that motivate you, mm -hmm. do certain things and reward yourself. You can't beat yourself up, bro. Mm -hmm. You can't beat yourself up. You gotta give yourself grace, give yourself time, give yourself forgiveness, but stay motivated. Well, man, I love your episode, bro. I can't Appreciate wait for it. us to rewatch it. But y'all know my words of wisdom because I say this every single show. It's time, find freedom. It's time.
Find God. <laughs> yeah, bro, you're <laughs> hard. He remembered it. Some people will be like, oh, I forgot it. Nah, but he remembered it. You yeah, I remember it. it. I remember it. Oh, all right, bet. Okay, so, man, listen, I asked y'all to like this show. I asked for y'all to hit the like button. I asked for y'all to comment and subscribe, man, to the channel because we're on a journey, man. This is a movement, the Freedom Experience. Thank you, and until next time, peace. <laughs> <laughs> the Freedom Experience.